Hello everyone, this is Yaros Dark. Welcome to another Entrepreneur's Journey podcast. Today on the line I have with me James Shramko, who I think it would have been a couple of years ago now, James, that uh, you popped up on my radar anyway. But uh, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, James is a, a fellow Aussie uh, based, I believe, outside of Sydney. Would that be right? Yeah, I'm just on the northern beaches of Sydney. Okay, so uh, living by the beaches is lovely. And James is, I, I don't, I, I mean, you're an internet marketer, but it's difficult for me to actually put a, a blanket label on you of what kind of internet marketer you are because you don't really fit into one box. It's almost like we were just talking about before we started recording. You, you do have so many diversified streams of income online and you've done so many different things within the realm of internet marketing yeah we i can't put you i can't put a label on you so what we're going to try and do though is is dig into exactly how you make money online today and, and get a little bit of a, a background study of how you got into what you're doing and i'm really curious especially for uh you know the people on this call who you know they they won't they're going to listen to you talk today James and probably feel a little bit overwhelmed by uh, the amount of things you actually do do because I know the conversations I've had with you I've often had trouble getting my head around how can all that be done <laughs> even you know even with uh, the size of your business because you don't exactly have tons and tons of employees or anything so but let me not jump ahead we'll dive first into how you got into this wonderful game that is internet marketing. So can you give us a bit of a background of uh, perhaps what you did before internet marketing? Were you uh, employed or, or studying? or? Well, I, this will probably explain a lot, Yara. I was a general manager of a Mercedes dealership. So I had 72 staff and I was running all of the different divisions, you know, the sales, service, parts, finance, administration. So I think that's where I became a generalist and where I became... Uh, good at at leveraging my time and managing lots of different projects all at once so that was what I was doing for my regular job and then I was actually looking for a book online one day by Jay Abraham and I stumbled across a squeeze page although I didn't know it was a squeeze page then and they wanted me to give them their email address and this was by two gentlemen called Stephen Pierce and Rich Sheffrin and I just as soon as given them my email address and they turned me around and said, well, did you know if you promote this page, we can send you commission? And that made me think, hang on a second. I don't have to just sell this one brand in this one place. I could sell this, um, this ebook or this report anywhere in the world if I had a website. So that gave me the desire to try and figure out how would I build a website? And from that, um, uh, I went and tried to build one on my web hosting account. Just and for comparison, James, you're comparing working within one shop where you have to stay in the same place exactly. and have a set customers versus the internet where you saw a global marketplace. Is that what you I mean? Just, uh, yeah, because yeah. I have family in the travel industry and I, I was observing their business change with the power of the internet because people were able to cut them out of the loop now and deal directly wherever they wanted to travel. Uh, you know, so I I just started drawing this comparison between a retail store and then the global access of an internet site. That the power of it struck me. This is about four years ago. It was or four and a half years now. It was it was so profound. I just had this knowing that I need to understand how to build a website. This has to be a good thing to understand. And about that time, I registered my own name as a .dot com, and I registered my business name as a .dot com .dot au just because I had a feeling that that would be a good idea to do that. Now, this was while you're working still at the Mercedes dealership. Yes. In fact, I was still doing this for about the first two and a half years. And it's only it's almost two years since I quit working. Okay. Um, the, so the, how did you, like, let, I guess for a lot of people, this is... Uh, really interesting because they have full-time jobs and they want to transition away from that to having a full-time income from the internet. How did you go about transitioning, especially because I believe if you're the head of a dealership in Mercedes, you're getting paid quite well. So you obviously need to see a fairly significant online income in order to make that, that transfer. Exactly. I was on near enough $300,000, uh, two Mercedes-Benz company vehicles, you know, fuel card and laptop and superannuation and all those good things. So the, the, the big challenge was how do I replace my income 
working this internet marketing part-time. And it took me two and a half years to reach that income level, but I did do that. I started from scratch. It was very slow and frustrating for the first six to nine months. And then I had a few little milestones along the way that helped me leverage up my income. And the first thing that happened when I quit my job is that my income escalated dramatically with online because I was able to tip that time and energy into my internet business. Actually, before you go there though, James, I'm really curious, what did you do during those six to nine months of, of frustration? What, what, was, what was that period? <laughs> well, this is quite funny, but uh, one of my first efforts was to be a blogger. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd, I'd heard about this blog thing and people thought it was, a, you know, they sort of laugh at you if you talked about it in public. And I didn't really know what my topic was. I didn't understand anything about it, except that I felt that I wanted to put content online. I wanted to express myself. I needed to somehow let the inner marketer inside me jump out. And I did the same thing that most people probably do is just put little posts trying to stick an affiliate link and get people to buy from me. And nobody bought anything. And in my struggles to try and build a website, I eventually caved in and spent some money and bought some website building software. And I'd already joined it as an affiliate. So the, the thing that happened that was sort of exciting but also disappointing was that I got a sale notification. As soon as I purchased the software, I got a sales notification that I'd earned affiliate income. So my first affiliate commission was to myself. So you, you bought through your own affiliate link? Not on not on purpose, but obviously I, I didn't even understand how cookies work and browsers, but I joined the affiliate program and then later on, and I'm talking like a month or two later on, I actually purchased the product and I got <laughs> cookied for my own sale. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. So I decided <laughs> until I realized it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it was very, very slow and I just couldn't believe how difficult it was, especially when I was going really well in normal business. I just couldn't imagine how difficult internet marketing was to learn by yourself so what happened next you, you made it your first affiliate sale did this this lead to more sales or and where are we on the timeline here are we on you know this is this the first this like year the, still this is the six to nine months mark okay. i started actually built an example website with the software that i'd purchased and i started to make some sales and at that time i combined some other business principles that I'd been studying, learning a little bit about copywriting and learning a little bit about strategy, I decided to create a bonus to complement my affiliate sale. And that model took off for me. I started selling. Um, my income went up to about $500 a month and then $1,000 a month. And then at the same time as I met Mike Phil Same at a Sydney conference, the Affiliate Project X product came out and it talked about the leech method. And I'd already been doing it, but I ramped up my activities. And that took my business from $1,500 a month up to about $3,500 a month. And then I went through the Traffic Secrets product uh, and instantly jumped up to $5,000 and then $6,000 a month. And okay. then before too long, I managed to get up to 10 and then 15 and then 20. So this, is, this is a lot of very rapid jumping along here. And I, I think everyone listening would be curious, A, how are you getting the traffic to your website? Like these are buyers you've got coming to your site. So maybe you could yeah. elaborate on that because essentially you're just selling someone else's software. So like they have a website building tool, right? And yep. you're just selling it as an affiliate. So how are you bringing uh, people to this website? Well, this is what I did. I actually set up my affiliate websites and they were very good for SEO and I was targeting buying terms. So I was really careful about what I was aiming to, to convert. I wanted buyers. The second thing, I, I, on each of the sales letter sites, I put a blog in a subdomain and started putting posts to the blog, pointing back to the sales page. So I guess it was like the, it was an original version of what people do now using the nano blogger technique, putting whatever it is that you want to sell on the home page and putting a blog behind it to drive traffic to it. And then I rolled up the sleeves and I sweated it out and I went into the forums and started posting lots of valuable posts with signature links back to my stuff. And I would literally answer every possible question I could in my target market. And I built up great brand equity. Then the other thing that happened was I started getting so much demand for the 
product itself that I'd created as a bonus that people approached me to buy the, the bonus as a product rather than um, buy the software that I was selling because they already had the software. So I guess I realized that the market was bigger for the people who already had the software than the market I was chasing who needed the software. Once I vertically integrated, I suppose, and I went up one layer in the market, I found the big pool of buyers who were already there and they knew about my product and they were convinced they needed it. So I put a sales letter up and I went to work in the forum doing warrior special offers and building my list and then marketing using multiple traffic channels now. So I had SEO, I had my list, I had forums, and uh, I had I started my pay-per-click traffic as well. So I started putting in multiple traffic channels. And, and you were doing this all outside of work hours because you were still all at the dealership. All outside of work, it's about three hours a day. So you're learning how search engines work because obviously you have to figure out this whole thing about using the right keywords when you created these blogs and these sales pages. Same for pay-per-click when you started studying that. Uh, the forums, obviously, you know, you had to know something about something in order to even contribute there with knowledge. So this is all within the first six to nine months. No, this is over the next 18 months. 18 months. Okay, so this right, this yeah. is really how I ex expanded from $500 a month to $5,000 a month. I just started activating more channels. And it's still the same two products pretty much, the, the actual affiliate yeah, product still, and your still own. Still the same core product and then the bonus which I was selling by itself. Okay. In fact, I managed to, to generate six figures from each of those by the time I was finished. And it was just from continually optimizing the process. I put out newer versions of it. I taught myself how to do e-covers, uh, build the websites, set up the shopping carts, run the pay-per-click campaigns, do, te put in uh, conversion tracking software, stick in email newsletter sequences. The first weekend that I learned WordPress took me an entire weekend just to set up a WordPress blog doing the old manual install. You know, I'm not sure why anyone would want to even know how to do that. But uh, uh, James, I, I, haven't, I haven't asked you, what's the actual software that you were selling? But just for people who will be well, curious. Uh, so. uh, the, the software that I really got my foot stuck into that market was Excite Pro. So it's sort of like a, a WordPress competitor in the beginning and it was a desktop website building application. So I really built an empire out of that. And what was and the bonus? The, uh, the bonus was called X, XSP Cheat Sheet, and it still sells today because the software hasn't changed that much in the last four years. And that, uh, you know, it has a very strong, I've got a very strong customer list of thousands from that product itself who you can leverage up into other products. And you just wrote this cheat sheet yourself, right? It was just a yeah. list of how to in use fact, this software? or It started out as 10 lines in Excel spreadsheet. Every time I built a website, I wanted just to remind myself that I should do this, 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 and this. And then I thought, well, people probably would want to know this if they bought the software, so I'll make that a bonus. And I turned it into like a three or four page Word document. And then I revised it and put screenshots and made it into 20 pages and then I revised it and put screenshots and turned it into 40. I think it ended up over 120 pages and then a video one-time membership area where they can log in and see Camtasia videos, get um, software that they can download, PLR, all sorts of stuff. It just grew into this monster product. Fantastic. A nice organic growth and you just stuck to one thing that was working really well for you. Exactly. So when did you branch out from that? I branched out when when I really wanted to flick the switch from leaving my work to becoming independent, which was essential for me. Like mindset-wise, it was just destroying me having to work for someone else and build their million-dollar business when I could be doing it on my, my own business. So the thing that I did was I'd built some websites for corporate clients in my as a, as a hobby you know, to make some revenue. And I found that I could sell them quite easily for three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. The big thing that, that um, activated the switch was I went back to these clients and said that I'll be going independent and I'd like to take on the internet marketing. And I put them on recurring contracts to look after their internet marketing, which meant that I managed their PPC, I managed their content creation and distribution and website optimization. So I put them onto recurring contracts of um, many thousands each, actually. The average of $5,500 each per month. 
and you're basically using the skills you had developed over the past sort of year and a half from affiliate marketing and, and, uh, and that product you created. Exactly. The core skills will work for anything, whether it's offline business, affiliate marketing or blogging. If you know your basic SEO, you know good keyword research, you know content creation, you know some conversion optimization, some sales copy, uh, and a few basic traffic strategies, then you can make a lot of money in many different business models using the same core foundation. Even if you're a domainer, you can still develop websites and, and grow them and then flip them again. Okay. So you've got affiliate marketing going well. You've got your own bonus going well. And in fact, if I was to recount the first time I heard about James Shramko, and as you always do when you first hear about someone, you always ask, so, you know, what's his thing? What's, what's making him different? And I was told, actually, what was making you different was your ability to um, do affiliate marketing and apply bonuses and make a, a, a really big impact on, the, you know, the top 10 lists of a big launches, especially in the internet marketing space. And you had some sort of clever techniques to do that, especially with the bonuses. So that's how I first heard of James. Obviously, you've gone on a bit further since then. But let's keep going with the story, James. So you, you've started to do consulting work, I guess is the best way to call it almost, or development work for, for companies. Yeah, um, I guess we, we call it offline business consulting now, don't we? Yeah, we and do. <laughs> so I, I added that one. And, and you're right, actually, I was, I was doing quite a few launch promotions um, quite a long, quite a long time actually before it became popular and before all the products got released about it, I was doing it. In fact, I still get recurring income payments now from ones that I did two and a half years ago, uh, which was sort of my first test into it, or maybe they were even three years ago now. But I did get good at jumping on product launches, and I still do it now. And it's always good for about five thousand dollars per month or ten thousand dollars per month just from putting together good bonuses and getting positioned well to capture a launch. But but I have tailed off a little bit on that because now I have such a strong list. I don't really want to share it around too much. In the beginning, though, it's a good way to build your list because you've got very qualified buyers and you know exactly what they've purchased and you can develop them into a community, which is really the big step that I did uh, just over a year ago is one of the bonuses that I created was a community or a forum and I built that from ground zero right through to uh, I think there's around about five or six hundred members at a hundred dollars per month now and I've been able to develop that into a great place where I've got tools and um, training you know coaching sort of stuff and we do webinars with experts and from that community, I've been able to de develop and evolve that into mastermind groups and also um, individual one-on-one -on -one mentoring groups. So once you have a baseline community like that, there's a lot of ways to maximize it. And then the final step is to license it out, to actually take the ideas and the knowledge and to sell or co-share on a joint venture basis with other people who don't have that but need it in their community or their product lineup. So I've recently been able to license some of the technology and some of the ideas to other people who pay me a royalty fee to use that information. Okay, so I'm already getting confused and to save everyone <laughs> who are no doubt also a little bit confused, James, could you in a nutshell, uh, because we're almost up to present day, just quickly go through how what exactly you make money from today and i know yep. it may be difficult but um you know do your best <laughs> we'll give it a shot yeah. <laughs> uh okay well i have my own products that i sell which will which are um you know like information ebooks etc starting from 17 dollars up i have services that i sell in seo website building pay-per-click management, content creation. Uh, well, there's quite a lot. That, that list goes on. There's uh, my membership site, which is a good recurring uh, continuity type product or uh, sort of a service and a product in one. There's my mentoring, which is one-on-one. -on -one. People pay me each month on a 30-day you know, basis for me to help them in their business by themselves. There's group uh, coaching where I have small pods, sort of six to eight people who sort of syndicate together to pay me to help them at once. 
there are websites that I've built, like blogs and and um, affiliate sites out there on different servers that ha- are using the same techniques that I used with my original site, but I just did a lot more of them in a lot of different markets, and they're just on autopilot. There's licensing stuff, which is just me selling my information that other people can use and they pay me a recurring fee. And there's the corporate consulting stuff. So people pay me to help them with their business and I've pretty much got that automated by outsourcing. So I I get paid by them to do the stuff. I pay other people to do it and then I just manage the project. So and <laughs> So, I don't know. There's there's probably one or two more. I, I might be forgetting. Uh, I've got a couple of blogs that do quite well just from the stuff that I post through affiliate links or product launches. But that that would have to be sort of the main stuff that I'm doing right now. And and how large is your email list roughly? If you're, oh, it's not massive. Um, if if I add them all up and whatever, then I'm probably still in the twenty something thousand range. But they're all buyers. Mm. That's that's very nice. Uh, okay, so we've got a range of products, a range of services, some corporate clients, some mentoring, some some masterminding. So there's quite a diverse range. It's sort of all based about around your ability though to basically do internet marketing well and, and get traffic and conversion. Now you've also gone on to speaking, so you haven't touched on that. But oh yeah, bef- see, I forgot about that. Before you that's dive right. into that though, I just want to know because obviously since you're you, you mentioned outsourcing before. Do you have employees or, or how many people work with you and in, in what format do they help you? Okay, it's a great question. Uh, I have well, I have no staff at home here. I work from home and I'm doing about four hours a day by choice. I have staff in many other countries. I, I wouldn't call them staff though. I just call them contractors. Um, so they work on a contracted basis either by project or um, some of them are full-time in the Philippines. So I've got a full-time people who I pay each month just to work on my stuff but I can give you sort of a rough snapshot of what you know what jobs I outsource and where they are in the world mm-hmm. so I have in the Philippines I've got three virtual assistants who just help me uh, to develop blogs keyword research create content um, get traffic and do basic designs so that they're just setting up websites all day long and linking them all and bookmarking them and and adding content and they transcribe all of my webinars and and any sort of mp3 or reports um, they, they turn them into pdfs and videos and help me distribute them and they do stuff like convert videos remark them and then upload them to youtube i've got a designer in the uk and i have a design team in the us uh, the uk guy does most of my logos and premium uh, e-covers the team in the us do the website development things such as logos and uh, web skins. The web team in the US builds WordPress blogs and sets them up with plugins and customizes skins and codes them and they do basic programming. There's an SEO team in India. It's about 35 of them and they're basically managed by a partner who I, who I do business with over there. There is, uh, let's see, well, I've got content creators in Australia, uh, do really premium content like press releases, high quality articles, stuff that you put on your own blog, like excellent, well researched and well written stuff. I've got an event manager um, slash personal assistant who does stuff when we run events. We sort of forgot about that too, but I do run events now as a promoter uh, to come in and help me set it up, organize speakers, logistics, hotels and stuff. And then of course, I outsource uh, a bunch of other stuff, you know, like things that I don't want to do around the house, like cleaning the pool, mowing the lawn, and transport to airports and stuff. And I have a travel agent. So I'm really not into doing stuff like that. I hate doing that stuff. Okay, so, and none of these people work with you, and do you communicate with them predominantly through email? Would that be correct? The new system that I use that, that I love is Basecamp. Uh, basecamphq.com has been a major revolution for my ability to leverage and communicate with my my teams so I can have one port of call that still lets you use email because it posts the jobs to the to the projects and 
in the case of mentees, one of the great things is that you build up a case history over months. So you, you end up with sort of mini research centers or mini product creation um, idea centers because mm-hmm. you've, you've, you've watched someone go from zero to wherever they're at and you've got the whole documented case study. So it gives you good ideas about what other problems people are having. And how have you uh, found all these people that work with you? Oh, I've never used an agency, not once. So it's almost always word of mouth or people who are my students uh, or someone who's, you know, I might ask someone like you, Yarrow, do you do you know someone that does X, Y, Z? And you might say, well, actually, check this guy out. I'd go through word of mouth first and okay, foremost. So word of mouth through and, people and your, who I trust. Your peer group sort of thing. Definitely. Okay. All right, so I think we've put together a good picture of what you do. Maybe a little bit fuzzy for people, but I think they understand it's like a, you know, a large internet marketing company with you as the head and a bunch of outsourcers and contractors around the world which you coordinate through Basecamp. And a lot of your income is coming from um search engine optimized websites bringing in the traffic automatically and just some sort of clever techniques to get buyers onto lists and and focusing on where the money is. Now, how did this parlay into um, speaking, and why did you even choose to go into speaking? Uh, sort of like speaking chose me, actually. Um, the short answer is that I actually went to a Warrior Forum meetup, and in order to to give them something valuable and useful, because I've, I've made a lot of money from that forum, I put together a traffic presentation, and I drove up to Queensland with my family. We took a holiday. And I presented it in um, Peter Drew's living room. And the feedback was pretty good. And that was fine. And I came back to Sydney. And then I went to see a friend of mine at a seminar in Sydney. He's a speaker. And I had a coffee with him. And he had to leave early. He had to go home for some reason. And he actually said, look, you should take my spot. And this is only just a, a year and a bit ago. And I said, well, you know, I'm not really a speaker. And I don't know if that's a good idea. And he said, no, you'd be great. So on short notice, I just wheeled out the other presentation that I did. I presented to I think 27 people on the last day of an event, and they were all worn out, and it was a Monday. And one person bought my program, and I, I thought that was pretty cool. She didn't have a clue about anything that I talked about, but no <laughs> one did. I just pitched it way, way over the, the level of the crowd. And it was all content, and it was, and, but the, the promoter, booked me for every event the next year because he thought that was fantastic because they were at that stage in their business where they really needed fresh information. And once you speak for one company, then all the other ones come out of the woodwork. It's sort of a, a quite a parasitical <laughs> um, environment. And especially if you have no refunds and your content's good, um, then even more so. And if you sell a lot of stuff, they love it because they, they want to take 50%. So uh, basically, I got booked by other companies to speak, and and I did the World Internet Summit, and that went really well. And then I went over, overseas. So now I started tuning my speaking to if I want to travel somewhere and build a new community, then I'll do it. So I did Dubai, and I did London and Dublin. I, when I go to the United States, I generally speak as a guest and not for money. So I did Stomp Alive and Jeff Johnson's event, and um, John Carlton's event. In fact, I didn't even know I was going to be speaking there. That was a surprise. But I'm more than happy just to share information. Same way I sort of shared some information in Melbourne at, at Ed Dale's event. So that I don't do it uh, just for money, actually. In fact, I hardly do it at all. I've only got two speaking events booked ever uh, because it's not super leveraged. Once you've done it for a year and, and got got the thing down uh, it's time to move on and to to build my business in other ways the good thing about speaking is it builds authority it is quite lucrative and you get a good customer base because they're they're paying uh i guess a high highest price to join your list so they're very qualified and they you can build communities so i've managed to extend my community in in other regions and i've got a very strong community of over 100 people in the uk and quite a few people in New Zealand and 20-something people in Dubai and quite a few in the United States and Canada now just by visiting there, reaching out, meeting them face-to-face. And I have a very strong community in Australia, obviously, because I've spent more time here in Brisbane and Melbourne and Sydney. 
but I've had enough of that now. Now I'm into running my own events. So you're you're running your own events now, as in, um, like for newbies or for your existing customers, or it started out as for new people because that's who I was um, finding at these seminars. They they attract very very raw people uh, because of the way they market. But I don't want to teach newbie stuff. I don't want to teach FTP or how to register a domain. I want to do the intermediate to advanced. So my new events. Uh, targeting intermediate to advanced marketers. They're, they're high value, high content with real experts. And my goal is that my affiliates will fill the event, not the promoters. I'd rather pay my affiliates than a promoter because my affiliates are generally my students and people in my community and I want to grow them and I want them to see six-figure incomes because the stronger they go, the better it is for all of us in our community. The okay. thing is... Um, it provides them an opportunity to to create bonuses and to provide uh, entry level training for their customers and for them to build a business just like I have. So I'm sort of passing the baton down, if you like. Mm, yeah, and it gives them a revenue stream too, which is always encouraging. Yes, and then one they know about. So okay, let's we I think we put together a picture, James, of uh, what you do now. Like I said, it's probably a little bit fuzzy for for people who don't you know they can't put the, every single piece of the puzzle together because not everyone will know what. You know how to do pay per click, how to do SEO, how to you know run live events, how to all these things you currently do. So there's quite a lot there, uh, but I think we have a nice, I guess, fuzzy big picture of the kind of business you run. Let's take it back though to uh, a person who is listening to this and they're just thinking, okay, wait a sec, I've been told I should focus on one thing and you know not not do all these different ideas because I'm just diluting what works. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure I've got the ability to, to replicate all these different skill sets. And in fact, I've been told it's, you know, it's not a good idea to do that. You should, you know, just pick that one thing you're good at and outsource everything else, which, which I think you're doing, but obviously you, you came along a path where you learned a lot yourself. So can we jump into the footsteps of a, a person listening to this who is expressing these doubts and maybe they haven't got a full-time income stream yet on the internet? What do you tell a person like that given a, a story you've just told of, of your own journey? Yeah, well, I think you've, you actually hit it right on. You've got to pick what, you, what you're good at. So remember the thing that I am actually good at is being a generalist and managing multiple projects. That's, that's my skill set. So I'm always going to end up in that situation. I could start with one project, but I'll end up turning it into five. It's just what I do. I'm, I'm good at leverage and I'm You're good sick. at strategy. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'll look at, I'll look at someone with one single business and I might feel that that could be, you know, that might not entertain me enough, but I absolutely get that for, for many people doing one thing amazingly well and being the world's best at it is probably a great strategy. Uh, I would say that if they can, find easy ways to leverage it into other areas that don't take away from their original business, then it's certainly worth looking at. And that gives you a little bit of protection in the case of an emergency where perhaps that business model doesn't work anymore or things don't go so well. So I'll give you a couple of real examples. If you're really good at pay per click and you're doing direct linking and then the technique doesn't work anymore, then now you have no business. Or if you're really good at creating sites as a publisher that sell Google AdSense and then they, they stop paying premium rates, then that goes away as a business. Or if you're really good at Twitter marketing or Facebook marketing, but then they change the rules, like they just changed the fan page to a like button, um, maybe that will impact your business. So I like to protect myself a little bit by going to multiple areas. But for my new students, I just say focus on the basic stuff. So I always teach exactly the same stuff. It doesn't matter which business model they're choosing. It's always going to come back to the core skills that you have to have. And once you know the core skills, then you'll probably have a natural tendency towards one business strategy. And they should, I, I say try and keep it to one or two strategies to start with, just one or two. And that way, you know, it's sort of like a little split test. One of the two will work better than the other and they'll probably get pulled in the direction. And if they're doing what I teach them, they're listening to their customer a lot and the business will change automatically as their customers tell them what they need and how they can solve problems better. So you don't want to be too fixated about you know, the 24-month the plan or the 12-month goal because 
it will change in this market it's so dynamic but the core skills don't really change you still need to have a little bit of research you still need amazing content you still need to get traffic and you still need to turn that traffic into buyers and I like to add on the leverage one which is like the next step once you've got that going and that's where a lot of the intermediates get stuck on their hundred thousand dollars a year when they could easily be turning that into five or six hundred thousand dollars by adding one or two little tick boxes what for your current student base given you know you, you kind of described I guess almost like a consultancy business there but what are your current students enjoying success with the most in terms of a formula and maybe even if you have a case study you could share well, I've got plenty of case studies uh, but some of some of the best some of the most switched on ones uh, started in my community in April last year so it's exactly one year and in one year uh, Many of them have gone past six figures and the way they've done it, uh, one of them actually sort of shadowed, shadowed under me and learnt uh, some of the principles I was teaching about helping other people get into internet marketing and he was doing some licensed speaking and set up his own community and information products. So he's been able to generate six figures just just very part time too because he was still working in university and he had a practice. So this is just part time, and he got out there and found buyers who were prepared to pay premium prices, who wanted to learn this information. So that was really smart. Another one who's doing really well um, started. I basically introduced him to a few overflow clients that I didn't want to pursue because it's not super leveraged for me, but he was happy to take it on a percentage split basis. And he basically just slid straight into clients that I gave him and serviced them for their pay-per-click and SEO management. And that uh, that got him momentum, and then he just ran with it from there, set up his own brand, and went and got his own clients, and became an expert, and started traveling around the world, learning the most he could about SEO and pay-per-click. And so now he's in a great position to teach others. And so he's flying with that. I've had about half a dozen people walk straight out of training, go to local businesses and sell SEO and websites. And they have complete confidence in that because I'm there to catch them with my services. So they don't have to know how to build a website. They don't have to know how to do SEO. They just have to know that the customer is out there in pain and the yellow pages doesn't work. And reach local and companies like that are charging quite a lot to manage their pay-per-click and they're bidding on very broad terms that may or may not get a result that's useful. Uh, so all my students have to do is go in, um, talk to them, care about them, provide a solution, give them a proposal and then hook them up with the right services that are going to help them and they take a big cut for being the middleman. Usually they can double the prices of the supply. So basically we, we become... 50-50 partners in those deals but of my 50% a lot of it goes to actual costs and outsourcing so they keep 50% that's all the margin for doing the work. So is it safe to say that most of uh, I guess your biggest success stories are coming from people who are really leveraging a gap in the market currently from you know mainstream world that just doesn't know how to use the internet for marketing purposes and a small group your students yourself you know, people who are well and truly into this industry who do know how to do internet marketing? Is, is that... Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's a good assessment. I, I, I'm i currently teaching that. Uh, that's what I taught in March at my workshop because that's the easiest way to make money right now. It's, it's the hugest, hugest market of um, un-internet marketing aware customers and students walking out of my workshops and my community are extraordinarily well versed in it in a short space of time so that there's that ability for them to go and capitalize on it. So right now that's what I'm teaching. But the good thing about this is that I'm also teaching them to build it under their own brand and to create their own entity so that they can then leverage that with information products, uh, services. They can basically make mini versions of the business model that I've got. And I, I like to teach people what works and something that they can build for themselves so they're not totally dependent on someone else. They're not dependent on Facebook. They're not dependent on one traffic model, whether it's paid traffic or joint venture traffic. They're learning how to run a business and 
that's really, I guess, that's where my passion is, is teaching people how to create their own business that allows them to become independent. And right now, I think that is a hot business model. How do you get a person who, you know, let's say they're following that path, but unlike yourself, who, you know, started first selling an affiliate product and, and you know, made a sale and, and, and actually generated an income stream uh, using internet marketing techniques before you started to sell how to do internet marketing techniques. So, you've, you know, you had the confidence to have actually practiced a little bit of what you preach. I'm assuming some of your, your students and, and obviously people listening to this call, I know I've dealt with lots of people like this too, who they want to potentially teach internet marketing, but they've never really had a successful, you know, a big successful website of their own. They haven't had, you know, a, a big affiliate marketing business. They don't have a successful blog. They're not, you know, doing massive pay-per-click campaigns and already making thousands of dollars. They're basically going out to small businesses and saying, I'll do your website, I'll do your pay-per-click, I'll do your SEO, I'll, I'll, I'll get your blog set up and all these things for you. But they, they haven't got that inner strength of having done much of it themselves to a successful situation yet. Like, how do you get people over that hump? Yeah, it's a great question. I think the the important definition here is, um, firstly, I don't think anyone should propose or teach stuff that they haven't got a knowledge of. Um, so, you know, if you're selling a pay-per-click course, I want you to be good at pay-per-click. So that's very important. In my community, the first 10-week or 10-module training program is called Superfast Start, and it takes someone from scratch through to registering their own domain, getting hosting, building an affiliate pre-sale site, putting it up on the server, setting up a list, making a free report, and making sales. So most people have gone through that introductory training wheel session. But let's just have a look at the situation you've proposed. In order to go to a business and help solve their marketing problem, they're not selling them a how-to internet marketing book. They're not saying they're a PPC expert. What they're saying is, you have a problem and I have a solution. They're not even, they don't have to say it's their solution or that they're doing the work. I encourage them to say that, that their team, the team behind their business are experts at this. Because I've gone and handpicked SEOs, I've handpicked web developers who are good at what they do, they're the best. And I've provided those services as a wholesaler to my clients. So my clients can go in with the confidence knowing that they don't have to know how to put up a WordPress site to know that a client with a crappy website that's not ranked and has um, no Google love would be better off with a nice custom SEO built WordPress site. As long as they know that and believe it, uh, which I believe to be true, then they just have to be able to match make. They have to be able to introduce that client to the solution and then they can outsource the solution. So they just need a working knowledge of how it works and why it works. And they get that through their training, whichever course they come through. Okay. So a little bit of, uh, I guess, you know, the, the hard part is getting that first client, making sure the job's done, and then you'll have the confidence um, on your back end that your team will put it together as well. So like yeah, anything... they, 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 they do have um, a lot of confidence because basically they've got support. Uh, that's the reason they're involved in a community is because you have someone watching your back. They help each other, but I'm also there. I'm, I'm just there in the background to help them if they need help. Yeah. And, but the good thing is the system works so well that, that it's not often that I would have to step in and help them. Okay, so uh, I think we got a very good idea of what you do, James, and how your students get success. And I think anyone listening to this, if um, you know, even if you're not necessarily one of James's students, you can see the angle we're, we're, we're talking about here. This is uh, basically about internet marketers learning how internet marketing works and then helping those who don't know how it works and providing a solution. So, uh, And I think the, the real big point here is the gap in the marketplace that exists right now. I'm seeing a, a lot of people actually pushing this idea that, okay, maybe uh, becoming an expert online is, is perhaps a little bit more competitive than it used to be, but going to your local area and providing services to businesses is a massive opportunity all over the world still. So I think that's a, a safe safe bet for your first income stream online. But James, before we um, wrap up the call, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know what drives you at the moment. Like why are you, what, you know why are you doing what you do? What are your goals? And, and how do you spend your time outside of work? Yeah, well, work has a pretty loose meaning for me. 
I've got a nice routine that I'm happy with. Uh, we mentioned before I live at the beach, so it's it's a fairly. Um, I've, I've basically designed this idea in mind well before I got to this point, so I'm quite happy with the way things are. I I don't live by the alarm clock. I, I like to to sleep in, go to the coffee shop, uh, swim in the pool, check on my outsource team, and do three or four hours of work. I don't mind doing two or three hours. Um, if I'm at home and in a productive phase, I might even do more. And then I spend a lot of time with my kids and I go mountain bike riding every second day. I do a 10 kilometer trek or sometimes I do it twice. And then I generally will do a, I'll potter for an hour or two at night because that's sort of my prime time where there's no distractions. Everyone's asleep. That 9.30 to midnight time is perfect for me. That's pretty much my routine. My goal is uh, just to just to have a very very strong uh, leveraged business where I, I don't want an office, I don't want staff, I don't want to have to leave the house to conduct business. I like it to be remote. I, I love the way that it is at the moment. There's no debt. It's cash flow positive, and it's more or less indestructible because I've spread it. I spread my risk across several registrars, several server companies. I'm in different markets with different business models. So that gives me a lot of comfort. And my goal is just to um, no, just, just, just to be happy. I just want to be healthy and happy. And uh, I'm more or less doing what I want to do from now. I don't consider myself in a job. And at, at any time that I like, I can tail off and do a lot less stuff. I could probably sell off some of the, the visions or the businesses that I've created, but I really do enjoy developing them. That's, that's something, you know, even my grandfather was out the back of his house as a timber broker when he was like 86 years old, buying and selling timber. He just liked the trading part of it. And what about your family? Uh, what do they think about it? Oh, they're all into it. Uh, my, my wife is a home mum, so... The, the entire time we've had kids, I've got four kids. Uh, she's she's basically been uh, at home and she's sort of involved in the business, in the strategy side and, and a good sounding board. And we like the lifestyle and the fact that, you know, where we can live and where we can travel to and all of that stuff is really nice. We have everything that we need. Uh, so they're, they're fine. My kids really like it. It's It's a cool thing. Their dad plays PlayStation and um, hangs out with them a lot more than some of their friends. So I, I don't think they've got any complaints. I mean, <laughs> gosh, we live on the beach and that, that in itself is uh, like a dream come true for all of my kids' friends. It's, it's fairly appealing for kids, isn't it, the beach? So Yeah. <laughs> All right, awesome, James. Now, I think everyone here would be quite curious to uh, learn more about you. What's the best entry point into your world? Well, I do have a blog. I guess that's pretty relevant to to what you do. And I should point out that I actually used to follow your blog in the very beginning. It was one of the the things that gave me hope that there is actually a way to make money online if another Australian was doing good stuff and connected up with these superstar American marketers. So I remember listening to your podcast in my car. Um, and, my, and my, main now... internet, in, my main internet marketing blog is called internetmarketingspeed.com. Internetmarketingspeed.com. Okay, yeah. James Shramko. Really hard to spell your last name, though. It's a doozy now. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is. I struggle with it sometimes. <laughs> so, I, I just bought a domain to make things easier for myself. I bought James dot me. <laughs> there you go. Okay, the internet marketing speed is a good entry point into your world. And now, ironically enough, people will be able to listen to a podcast with you on their car on the way home. So you can see how this can go full circle. So that's really awesome. Um, thanks, James. I I think everyone will appreciate the diversity of what you're doing here, but also the simplicity of, of the opportunity you're tapping into. So hopefully they'll come away with something. And I appreciate you uh, joining me on the call today. Yeah, it's awesome to hang out, Gary. Thanks very much. And I look forward to catching up uh, at some kind of event, no doubt, in the near future. Well, I hope, hope you'll come to mine in September. Yeah, well, give me the invite. I'll be there. I'll send it. <laughs> Thank you.